All clear. Contact starboard. Any timing of downdraft carburetor. Always watch the volute drain. Fuel issuing is the only sign you would have of if fuel is on it, stop and at once. Remove the bottom side of the lower cylinder and the setting. May call the diesel. Only by carrying out the proper drill is it certain that you can start your range and do up damaging again. Now going to see the drill of my and we want to look at the vector, the principle in all industries. To make sure that the aircraft, which it must always keep going down, up to the firmness and the space, the safe flow. Meanwhile, he used a table about socket. We will now begin by concentrating on that part of the concerns in the following check. All make sure the undercarriage will otherwise the or the engine start. We put on the indicator switch. Then it's the ignition switch. Fuel is next thought, so see the prevent off and turn on the The special vehicles must be set for the control lever is in the normal propeller from an after the control in the M direction of O gear. See that the air intake can have that let open the cowling gear. Okay. Pilot now takes all the air to the ground crew to prepare the engine. Well, it shouldn't require priming, but it will begin by checking the bottom and turning. Two complete pressures are this check must be carried out a week before starting up any engine as it does its own. If the engine will count to three from the hydraulic lock, its operation is to fill the priming pump in the point and its piping to cure. What is the correct method of doing this? First, the withdrawal of the plunger slowly to the pump. Then the pattern is going to fully slow. This should be repeated until a rapid increase in resistance is felt to create a full pipeline. Then the plunger is withdrawn again, so that the pump also will be a richer object. The priming will be that way. All clear. Contact. Starboard. Pilot presses the starter button. The propeller begins to rotate. The starter magneto is switched on and the planning of the engine begins then and thus the mixture is built up gradually to the proper strength. The slow withdrawal of the total pump, strong pressure to enter the if the engine has not started the maximum of 20 seconds, the starter motor should be given time to cool down before trying again. And while waiting, the pilot should check that the rotation of the engine has not caused the problem. Yes, double. When the second attempt is made, timing begins again, and the room of the bottom mixture strength has reached the end of the fire. Continue to prime slowly until the engine picks up on the carburetor and runs evenly. 
As soon as this happened, the Sunday was a screwed home and a staff making. In the meantime, when the engine started, the pilot ought to have seen the oil pressure rise to make After a few minutes, the needle should begin to fall gradually to normal working pressure as the engine oil warms up. Second engine is now started in the same way. This high initial oil pressure ensures a quick distribution of cylinders and pistons, the time when the need for lubrication is most critical. As the engines warm up, the oil temperatures will rise. With an advisable working figure, the engine should be opened up for the normal ground checks. The object of correct running down is far more important than the simple actions involved make it seem, and it must be carried out whenever an engine is to be shut down. When the normal ground drill, such as exercising the superchargers, has been completed, the running down begins. First, the throttles are set to allow the engines to idle at 8 to 900 RPM. The reason for this is to give these scavish systems time to empty the sump and therefore to reduce the risk of oil overflowing into the inverted cylinders while the aircraft is standing. It will also allow the temperature of the cylinders to fall more rapidly. After about three minutes, the cutout control is pulled and as soon as the propeller has stopped rotating, the cutout control is released smartly and the main magnetos are switched on. The master fuel cups are then turned off. Note that an engine should never be stopped by turning off the fuel and running the carburetor dry. Next, the throttles are closed fully. The final action is to switch off all the remaining electrical circuits, which also means pulling the safety wire across. The purpose of oil dilution is to make starting from cold easier by having only diluted oil in the end. Let's see how this is achieved. If possible, the oil tank should always be topped up for him. Since the engine oil is going to be diluted with fuel, it is obvious that the temperature of that oil will not be allowed to fall in order that the fuel will not be evaporated immediately by the heat of it must not be higher than 45 degrees centigrade, preferably considerably lower. The engine is started up and run, in the case of a Bristol engine, at about 900 RPM. The dilution switch in the engine nacelle was then pressed. This allows the controlled quantity of fuel to enter the main oil feed and dilute the oil circulating through the engine. After a period of one to four minutes, depending on climatic conditions, throttle should be closed and the engine stopped as before. Instead, the engine can be left for periods of three days in cold weather without the usual running. And even then, it will be easy to turn over and ready for instant start. 